This is one time uh, we want to be obedient to God. Amen. The Lord told me that each one of us would have a message from him to you. And whosoever will, because it comes from our Father. Now this morning we'll have Pastor Moore first, then Pastor Bond second, and then we'll come on behind them. And let's elevate our hands and tell them both, come preach. Come preach. awesome and and you know what the choir was singing that song I just got chills all up and down my body I don't know about anybody else but I just I just felt it just all over me and, and you know I, I just every day that I wake up I'm just thankful to God and I just continue to thank God for his mercy and that they're renewed daily and, and I thank him for his loving kindness and, and for the grace that he's given out to each and every one of us because I tell you, Pastor preached last week, and I could not remember what he said the year 2013 was. But but it, but it bothered me all week, and I didn't have my book, so I couldn't look it up. And I could have called him, but I prayed about it, and, and, and so the Spirit told me that this is the subject of my message, and, and he said, Seeking God in 2013. There you go. So, so that's what he put on my heart, to, to, to seek him more and more like we never stopped him before. In 2013, seek God like never before in your life. Yes. And so this morning, I did ask Pastor what 2013 said, and Pastor, you said it's what? Do you all remember that? And, and I couldn't remember it. But I, 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 I did remember one, but I couldn't remember the other. But, but, it, but it bothered me. Because what that says is that 2013 is going to be a year. And if you separated from God, you, you thought you had some problems, you getting ready to encounter something that you don't even have any idea of what's going on in your life. So in 2013, the Spirit told me we need, we need to seek God like never before. Like never before. So, so, and you all know that when I, when I talk about seeking God, I'm coming from Matthew 6, chapter and the 33rd verse. But, and I'm just going to touch on that because the Spirit had me all over the Bible. And, but Matthew, that's my thing, my verse. The key verse is Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. And if you go back and you read the sixth chapter of Matthew, it'll begin to tell you what are the other things, the things that he's going to add to you. He's going to add all those things to you. He's telling you that if, if he can take care of the lilies in the field, how much more can he clothe you? He's telling you about everything that he's able to take care of. So where are you supposed to put your hope? Where are you supposed to put your trust? Where are you supposed to be obedient to? Who are you supposed to see? Who are you supposed to call out for? to? And we're supposed to call out to God. We need to call him. We have just celebrated a season that we talk about. It's a song said, if you only knew. Yes. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus, God's son, the, Jesus Christ. And we're talking about him and what he lived and he, what he was born to do. Yes. Jesus never strayed. He never strayed. We unfortunately stray time and time again, and God continues to forgive us as we repent unto him and ask him for forgiveness. None of us are perfect. Let's get that straight. Nobody is without flaws. As we talked about in Sunday school this morning, if the church was perfect the moment you stepped in, it became imperfect. So, so don't think that you're somebody that's all these people that are high and above everybody else. We all need to be seeking God. That's what the Spirit told me. Nobody was exempt. Nobody was exempt. So if you if you think you got a relationship, he's calling he's calling you for more. Oh. He wants more from you. He wants you to spend more time studying, more time praying. He wants you to spend time fasting. He wants to spend time meditating. He wants to, you to fellowship with him more. Yeah. Learn who it is that you're talking about. John. St. John 14 and 13 and 14. I'm going to give you a second to turn there. And, and I 
mean, I, I wrote so many scriptures down, I don't, I don't even know what I wrote. But St. John, the 14th chapter, in verse 13 says, And whosoever shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes. So as you're seeking him in 2013, ask him. If you do not know, have knowledge, you don't know what's going on, he said, ask that of God. So he, he, he's making himself available for us like he never had before. Yes. And you, we need to understand that. Because he knows what the year 2013 is representing. And he knows that Satan is going to do everything he can to kill, steal, and destroy his children. So he wants you to be prepared for that. Don't sit back and let Satan come in and steal the joy that God has given to you. As Minister Barnes or Pastor Barnes was praying this morning, she prayed about that. So again, she, we didn't talk to one another. So the, the Spirit had her praying a prayer that we need to have going into 2013 for this household, this household, no accident, no, it was by no small means that she prayed that prayer. And we need to understand that when we're obedient and we operate in the spirit of God, then he's leading and guiding and directing us in everything that we should say and do. And, 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 and as she had said in Romans 8 and 28, for those who are called according to his purpose, God has already ordained some things, even about this message this morning, that each and every one of us will speak on. It's going to come through prayer, it's going to come through song, it's going to come through the word. But what we all have is a Bible. And you need to get your Bible, get your pencil, get your paper, because if you don't write it down, you're going to miss it. As much as I thought I wrote down this past week, when I went back to find my notes, I could not find those two words for 2013. And I had three pages of notes. But I didn't have those two words, but, I, but it was in my mind. And it, 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 it just set up, it set up, I guess it set up residence. It was there. Yeah. And we need to know and understand that. It, it said in Isaiah 56, 55 and 6, it said, Seek, you, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. There's going to come a time where that may not be possible. And what will begin to happen to, for some of us is because we don't have that relationship, we'll begin to fall by the wayside. When you go to, to James 4 and 8, it said, draw near to God, for he will draw near to you. If you just, if you just want to, if you have a desire to seek him, if you have a desire to fellowship more and more with him, he will be found. He said, call upon, ask, and it shall be given. Begin to see how the word of God is working on our behalf. And he's put the word in our life so that we will understand what's going on. Yes. We're not going to go blind into 2013. Uh, James 4 and 7 said, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And we know, we have heard pastors say time and time again, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, I guess, that there is no temptation. That Right. We, we've heard it, but we got to get beyond just hearing the words. we got to get beyond just being hearers of the words. What does James say? Don't just be hearers, but what? Be doers. That's where we got to go. That's where he wants us to go. He wants us to be obedient unto him, the things that he's given unto us. And we just got to be found doing that. Because over in Je Jeremiah 24 and 7, and I know I'm giving you all a lot, of, of scripture, but I'm giving you just, I'm only giving you a few of the ones that the Spirit gave me as I was studying. Jeremiah 24 and 7 said, And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. With their whole heart. And then when we go over to, to Psalm 51, 51 and, and, and 10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Cast not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. What do we want next year? We want a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit so that he can lead, guide, and teach us to all understanding. Everything that we go through, everything that we've gone through, yes. he will 
will give you clarity. He will give, he will give you that understanding that you would need, and he will deliver you. You will be delivered if you have a desire to be delivered. And we got it. We, in 2012, 13, we got to have a spirit of discernment. Amen. We have to have a spirit of discernment. And I'm just write these scriptures down, you all. I'm not going to be before you much longer, but just write them down. Go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and the 14th verse. It said, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. My God. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he, he himself is judge of no man. That's what the spirit of discernment will do for you. And we need to be aware of that. Those are just a few of the requirements that are, are, are required for us going into 2012, 13. And, 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 and our dependence is on God, and we've got to know that. And then our in having our dependence in, on God for 2013, go to 2 Corinthians the third chapter and the fifth verse and it says not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves but our sufficiency is of God he's got it all he's got it all from beginning to end and we've got to know that and we've got to know that we're going to exercise our faith and in Hebrews 11 and 1 says now faith is substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, not things seen, but things not seen. So we got to begin to operate on that. We got to know what that is. And when we go to John, the fourth chapter, go to John, the fourth chapter, and I'm getting ready to sit down from here, but I want to tell you what just a little few things that the Spirit told me. John, the fourth chapter says, in verse 23, starting at 23, it said, But the hour cometh now, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And that's what he's saying for 2013, for us to know. And I'm closing with this verse. And you need to know and understand that we have got to seek him in 2013 with all that you have like never before. And I'm closing with Revela Revelation 22 and 14. And Revelation 22 and 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Seek God in 2013. Amen. 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 For some different things. The Spirit gave me a simple. And it says, it's time. The scripture is going to be found in James, the first chapter, I'm sorry, James, the first chapter, verse 21 through 25. Father, we come before you right now. Yes, Lord. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you just show and bring back yes, everything Lord. to Please, Lord. Members Please, members Lord. that you gave me concerning yes, this message. You said it's, it's time. Mm. And Father, you and you alone know what all that means. Yes, you now, do. Father, help show us, Father, what it is time for us to do or not do. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, for it. We yes, praise Lord. you, Father, for it. And we honor you, Lord, with yes, our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. time. It's time. It's time yes, for Lord. those of us who call ourselves Christians to stop going to church uh -huh. and to now become the church. Uh -huh. It's time. That's what he's saying. When you have James 1, verses 21 through 25, say amen. 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 I am reading from the King James Version today. And so, I do study back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I study back and forth, but y'all know. <laughs> uh, 
But it says in verse 22 through 25, But be ye, ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if we be hearers of the word, and do and not a doer, well, he Lord. is like a man beholding his natural face oh, in the glass. For he beholdeth himself, and go, goeth his way, and straight forth forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoever, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. So James is telling us to be doers of the word. Clearly James is telling us we have to stop uh, reading scripture. We have to stop coming to church. We got to stop memorizing scripture. Well, Some of us have been in church all of our lives, but church ain't been in us. Well, see, we've been going to a building, and we've been we've been going to different denominations, and we've been hearing the word, but we have not been doing the word. Amen. It has not been applied to our life. This is what James is telling us. He's telling us it's time out now. For in 2013, you heard what Pastor said. What that that means? That means rebellion is going to get stronger. Yes. There's going to yes. be more and more things happen in 2013 than happened in 2012. So those of us who are called by His name, it's time for us to move up a step. It's time for us to stop attending Sunday school. Well, you should have been attending that any learning opportunities, but we ain't going to talk about that. All the learning opportunities that there were of reading the Bible, of attending Sunday yes, school, Lord. of coming to Bible study, of doing all of those special things that we have been doing, it's time out for doing those things by coming and now to apply what you've been learning all this time to our lives. It's time, in other words, we done read about what happened with the old prophets in, uh, throughout the whole last year, it took us a whole year to get through the minor prophets. And we saw over and over and over how the children came to God when they needed God, but then as soon as God blessed them, they began to turn from God and do their well, own thing, and then the world kept getting worse and worse. Well, what is he saying? James telling us the same thing in the New Testament as they did in the Old Testament. Stop just coming in here and now start doing it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's time for us to start doing. It's time for us to stop getting happy on our holy dance songs, our gospel songs, and falling out and being slain under a, a song and music and then getting up talking about the limitations of life. Wow. See, that's what he means by that. See, it's time for us to stop shouting and singing and praising God, but then as soon as an ache or pain comes, we yeah. instead of doing what the Bible says, call those things that aren't as if they are, yeah. we begin to call the things that are as they are. Wow. Make that James cool. said it's time to stop that. Yes, it's Lord. time for us to stop calling on sickness. Stop claiming it. He said by his strength. We are healed. Well, he didn't say we wasn't going to go through a process of healing. He's not saying you're not going to ever get sick. But he's saying you need to stop doing it the, the, the world's way by talking about your sickness. Because guess what? The more you talk about something, yeah. the worse it gets. It becomes, uh, uh, it gets in your mind. So if I got a headache today, if I keep talking about it, by midnight I'm going to have a migraine. It's time now. In 2013, it's time to apply God's word to our lives. And verses 22 through 25 tells us these in verses are instructions for us to move forward in our spiritual maturity. It's time out for the same old issues. It's time out for that. We ain't got no business. I know I said ain't got no business. We ain't got no business in 2013 still going off on people, people when in 2012, all year long at Bible study, we done learned that we should not be doing that. We done learned that a soft answer turns away wrath. Now, he said it's time to move up, Christians. You 
can't stop. Can and I'm going to tell you why it is. We've been attending church long enough now. It's time to put what you learn into action. It's time out for our excuses. It's time to get real. This is what James is telling us. When he talked about just looking into the mirror and pretending you don't see it. You know, right here in verse uh, 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way in straightforward way, forgetteth what manner of man he was. Wow. You know, you went and looked in the, in the mirror, but yeah. you didn't really see yourself. He said, it's time out for that. It's time to get real with God. Yes, it it's time for us to stop talking about, I just tell a little bitty lie every now and then. It's time for us to say, it's time for us to stop saying, well, I just want a relationship. You know, so, and, 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 and I'm just having, I, after all, I'm a young man. I'm a young woman. I, I just need to have a man or woman in my life. I, I just need some, a relationship. It's called fornication. James says, stop being a hero of the world, but become a daughter of the world. Stop it. You do it. Why? Because we're, we're ruining ourselves. Who We're ruining ourselves for the man or woman that God has. Because we let these other things break us down. Okay, well, I'm going to get off here. It's time out. I'm sorry, but that's what he said to me. It's time to be real. It's, stop, it's time for us to stop saying that I'm not a backbiter. Oh, I didn't really mean it that way. Well, why is it you always saying it that way? So when are you going to stop, stop not meaning it that way and stop doing it that way? If you really didn't mean it that way, it's time to stop doing it that way. Okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm talking with me. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Hey, it's me, y'all. Okay. That, that, it, I'm preaching to me. The Spirit's telling me it's time out for the for any backbiting among my brothers and sisters. I don't have time to pick you apart. There are people out there in the world that are dying from rebellion that need to know this Jesus that we serve. But we're so busy in our own stuff, we can't share the Christ with them and bring them to him. Well, so that he can help because you can't help them. You'd be just as confused as them. Lamentations 3 and 40 tell us to search and try our ways. <laughs> search ourselves. It says, and try our uh, and, and try our ways, and turn again to the Lord. Stop telling yourself that 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 this is not really the way it is with you. Well, Search, take a look at yourself. See, the Holy Spirit. What will happen is, is the Holy Spirit is going to allow you to see the errors of your ways. Yes, he will. He's gonna show them to you. And guess what? And when he shows them to you, it's not so that you can rebel. It's so that you can ask, submit yourself unto the Lord and say, Father, get real. Father, I'm a liar. Father, I'm, I'm, I'm an adulterer. Father, I'm a, 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 a person who likes to steal. Father, I'm a, a person who likes to put people down. It's time for you to confess that to Christ. Yes, and then after you do, say, now, Father, I can't control it. I didn't try. We know Isaiah said, he said, I am a man that dwell uh, among people with an unclean lips. In other words, they was cussing folks out. Okay? And I'm doing the same thing. Father, I help me with this. But see, God can't help us until we get real for it with it. That's the reason Lamentation 3 and 40 told you to search it yourself. Let the Spirit search that heart. And then when it do, let the Spirit show you. Admit to the Father what your problems are. Y'all can hear me. I don't need no mic, right? Let, let the Spirit of God show you what the problems are. And then ask the Spirit to help you to overcome it. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Why is because of the fact that 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 only the Spirit can constrain us. Right, right. Only the Spirit. Thank you, Thank you Sister Thank Jackie, you. for reminding me that uh, they can't hear without this money. It's time for us to stop complaining about all of our sicknesses and our diseases. In Matthews 1 and 10, he said, 
Jesus gave his disciples the authority to drive out evil spirits and heal all sickness and disease. So while we all walking around talking about I'm dying from high blood pressure, well, he said Jesus gave us authority to his disciples. Are you his disciple? Yes. Amen. Oh, you didn't know that? Yes. You didn't know you was his disciple? Yes. You were supposed to be a yes. disciple of Christ. Yes. So you have authority over all sickness and diseases. You have authority over all evil spirits. We have authority over those through Jesus Christ. Now, nah, no. don't be like the children of Skeba now. That's not running up there that's in that's your that's name, that's talking about that's what that's you was going to do. That ain't what I'm telling you. When this right. authority that he, he's right. talking about that's is right. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Now, understand that the name of Jesus Christ is the most powerful name on earth. My that's Lord. the reason why you should not be using the Lord's name in vain. What does that mean by using the Lord's name in vain? Don't be every time you see a movie come on or that you don't like, you talking about old Jesus. What Jesus got to do when you're not liking the movie? The power of Jesus' name can bring and down all heaven and earth can destroy. Yes, so why would you be using it yes, like Lord. it was nothing? It's power behind that name. Yes, he is. said through his name you that. can cast out these devils now. Right, right. Not yours. Oh, yes, he is. He didn't say he wasn't going to get sick. But see what he told us. He said, then you do what I told you. You, you step out in faith. Amen. He said, now it's time to be the doer of the work. Yes. They have diagnosed me with cancer. Yes, they diagnosed me with whatever they say that they didn't diagnose me with. But you didn't walk and say, but Lord, you said, by your stripes I'm healed. And in, in your name, I claim this victory. And you go through the process of whatever you need to do. Don't be talking about, though, I ain't going to take the chemo. If God leads you to take the chemo, then take the chemo. He said, I will take you through each process. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All things. Rebellion. All things. It's interesting. I told Pastor back in the office. Now I know why he had me to share this information. There's a very, very, very dear friend of ours who, uh, she's been a friend with my sister since she was nine years old. They were best friends. She has died. Died yesterday. She died out of rebellion. Mm -hmm. She died because she had, high, she had congestive heart failure. She had cancer. She refused to take the medication. She refused chemo because it meant that she couldn't drink her alcohol. Rebellion is real. Yes, it is. You might look at it and think, how stupid is that? But when you're in the world, the world will tell you, ain't nobody going to tell me what I'm going to do. See, that's called rebellion. I'm going to do it my way even if it take me out. And that's what it's going to do. Oh, yeah. That's what it's going to do. Okay? But if you, this is what God is telling us. That as children of God, it's, not, it's time. It ain't only the, the, the unsaved that are doing this. That's right. It's us too. Yes, it is. We, we, he said we was a stiff-necked, hard-headed folk. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he tell us to go and take two aspirin, and we decide we don't want to take no aspirin. I want to take my Vicodin later. He tells you to go lay down because he knows that you done put too much pressure on your body. At this point, I'm going to lay down. I, if I lay down now, I won't be able to sleep tonight. That's right. That's what we do. Yes, it is. It's time. It's time for it's us time. To, time to stop making excuses for our failure to do more for the body of Christ. It's time for us to stop talking about why we got to beat up the deacons and the deaconesses about $10 every year. What do I mean by that? Because God has blessed every one of us in here with a job or retirement. Yes, he has. And he said, give an extra $5. It's time for us to stop talking about I can't give the extra $5. Well... Why do I say that? Why do I say that? Because what you're doing is you're limiting. It's called a spirit of, of scarcity. You're limiting.
questioning God's ability to bless you. When God asked you for five dollars, he got five thousand waiting on you. He just waiting to see if you're going to be faithful to give him the five that he asked for. Oh, I'm sorry. But that's the way it is. It's time out for it. It's time out, church, for the nonsense as to why we are not doing what God has told us to do. It's time out. It's time out. Nobody don't have time for it. The world don't have time for this anymore. I'll tell you in one minute. Look out, look and see. Look and see what's going on. In 2 Chron Chronicles 9 and 22, if you don't believe me, read it for yourself. God made Solomon more wiser and yes, richer than everybody. He'll do the same thing for you. Yes, he will. If you just trust him. While we run around talking about our limited funds, ask God to increase your finances and then be obedient to him. Amen. Why? Why is it so important? that we begin to be obedient. I want everyone to turn with me to Romans 5 and 19. Romans 5 and 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made yes, sinners, Lord. so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's the reason why it's time out. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Isn't God all right? Yes. I hope y'all beginning to see as these messages unfold that this is why I always try to tell you you need to have that spiritual discernment. Because a lot of times God will speak to you in ways that you can understand. Yes. Again, I, if I would have a subject, it would be keep the Lord in our lives in this new year, yes. part two. Yes, 13 does mean depravity and rebellion. Yes. But also, there's a 2-0 in front. Yes. Yes, sir. Is that not right? Yes, sir. Yes. All right, and we must honor that. God told me to make sure I explain and make sure you understand that yes. 20 means salvation. Yes, salvation. And y'all got to understand, even though it's depravity, even though it's rebellion, God says if you obey him, yes, and you will have that salvation. Now, you got to understand that, and our job is to make sure, because none of us are going to be here in 21. 13, you understand? Yeah. So that 20 is important to us to let us know that throughout my whole life, no matter what I've come through, it is because of the salvation of God. I know some of us think we did it. No, sir. No. And I'm going to spend a little time, and again, I want to remind you of uh, Psalm 65 and 11. If you begin to grasp what God is saying, thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. Which means that if you had been obeying me, doesn't matter what year it is and what is going on, our job is to understand like I want to remind you again in Colossians 4 and 5, walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Yes, Lord. See, what you have to understand, you, me, all of us, when we come in 
the church door. We're telling that world that I am not only a disciple, but I'm a witness. Yes, yes. a witness. And, and I wish we begin to understand that God hadn't treated us so bad. You understand what I'm saying? Because yes. according to the world, the world should have ended in 2012, and sometime by December 21st. Yes. No man knows the time nor the hour. We're supposed to have, we're going to get ready to go off a physical cliff. That has nothing to do with a child of God. No matter what God said, regardless of how you might feel, I brought you through another year. Yes, Lord. I said I brought you through. No, it wasn't you that did it. I did it. And I'm only asking that you give me the praise and give me the glory. If you give me a few verses in Psalm 71, and, and I'm only going to go to about the 8th and ninth verse, but... But I want you to read and study that again for your own. No matter what, in this year, whatever the world has said is going to happen to you, you still made it. And instead of speaking that nonsense, when it comes time to face adversity, it says in Psalm 71, please get that because there's some good words from that. It says, in thee, not the circumstances the world saying, in thee, O daddy, O Yahweh, O my father, do I put my trust. Yes, Lord. I know they told me I might have this and I might not have this and this supposed to happen and they're going to lay me off, they're going to do all them things, but you still made it. Because... Whether you acknowledge him or not, sometimes he just interfered in your life and said, because you're my elect, and I want to let you know how much I love you. And then all we got to do is say it back to him. Yes, Lord. Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I trust you. And, and then when we understand and you speak it back to him, he'll speak it back to you, and it calms your spirit. Then you can say, let me never be put to confusion. Yes, Lord. You have to understand, that's a, a very, who is the author of confusion? Satan, Satan himself. Babylon, the word babble means confusion. Yes. When, when, when all of this, anytime you see Babylon and all of that, all of that is confusion. God said, even in spite of all the confusion, if I asked him, let me never be put to confusion. Meaning, no matter what's going on, I'm not going to get bent out of shape. I'm not going to let them see me sweat. Why? Because in this time, even when I did it, whether I acknowledged it in 12, I sure enough need to really focus in on 2013 because depravity and rebellion is going to escalate. Yes. Yes. But if those who trust in the Lord can ask it, no matter what's going on, Daddy, deliver me in thy righteousness. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Don't care what's going to just deliver me, very personal, in thy righteousness and conjunction and cause me to escape, incline thine ear unto me and save me. Isn't that awesome? I can ask him to do that, and he'll do it. Most of the time, we like, like, like the preacher said, we get to speaking about what the stuff is instead of saying, Lord, save me. Amen. <laughs> Are you beginning to hear what God's saying? I, even though something we didn't say, but now it's time to speak it back. He told you in Isaiah 43, tell me what I said. Yes, he did. Yes, sir. Okay, speak it back to him and tell him, deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thy ear unto me and save me. That's why it bothers me when I hear Christians on my day can't get a prayer through. Wait a minute. He said, ask. Tell 
be given. Didn't he say that? Yes. Knock, and the door shall be open. Yes, Lord. Now, what we have to start is believe in him. And, and, and then we don't have to worry about so many things. I, I know that's what it means, but, but, but the third verse kind of gives us relief because it says, Be thou my, notice how personal that is. Be thou my strong habitation. I mean, I can rest in you. He said, unless now I'm in you and you in me, because without me you can do nothing. When we have trouble, we run everywhere but into his, into his care. We allow people to tell us things, and we become stubborn and say, I ain't going to do that. But it's time to say, be thou my strong habitation. Because I got some problems, God, I can't handle. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need your yes, help. Yes, Lord. Sometimes you just have to talk to Dad and be straight with him. He already know. Some of them tell me, I don't want to tell God. Wait a minute, you can't tell him nothing. He ain't going to never say, oops, I ain't never heard that before. Whereunto. I may, listen now, whereunto. I may very personally continually resort. Oh, that's, you have to understand. We, we, we say, I'm going to resort to relax. We understand that. Resort means I will continually depend on you. Amen. I'm going to de de continually de depend on you to give me rest and relaxation and quietness no matter what's going on around me. What happens is we let what's going on around us make us lose our joy. We forgot, he said, in thy presence. It's fullness of joy and pleasure forevermore. And yet we'll run to a battle some drugs. So we done saw on all the all the soap operas. Every time they get a little stress, they grab a little shot of whiskey and dump it down. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of calling on God. Yeah. Thou has given, listen now, thou has given commandment to save me. In other words, I've written you a love letter. And I, I'm acknowledging that. See what it means to Acknowledge me in all your ways. What he said he's going to do. He direct my path. Well, this is what this psalmist is doing. He's acknowledging the fact that I know you have given commandments to save me. Why? For thou art my rock. Yes, Lord. Yes. In other words, that other rock ain't our rock. You need to read Deuteronomy Amen. 32. Y'all don't hear what I said. And then I, I got a fortress that I can go into and Nothing can get through that fortress because God is my fortress. God is. God is. In the book of Romans, it tells you, hey, nobody can pluck you from my father's yes, hand. Yes, yes, yes. Nobody. nobody. Be the death, no, whatever, them thing, a whole bunch of things. You don't have to worry about it. Your job is to acknowledge it. Like in 2013 and wherever the rest of your life, you got to start speaking back to God. Amen. Exactly what he wrote to you. Amen. Now listen, listen, number four. It says, I may not, uh, I got some folks messing with me, Father. What do you say? Had old bad, supervisor, whatever. Hey, yeah. go to daddy and say, deliver me. Yeah. Oh, my Elohim, my creator. And that brings it down to the level of this flesh age. Deliver me, O oh God, out of the hands of the wicked. Out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. Have you ever asked God to do that instead of going around the water cooler, the dog and your boss out? No, just talk to daddy about it. Yeah. I mean, tell him y'all heard me. I'll tell daddy on you in a minute. Well. 
I know Psalm 56 is in the Bible, so I can tell my daddy anything I want. And too many times we don't do that. Yeah. We get mad and, and on our breath cuss him out, but that's yeah. not what he say do. Yeah. Even if he's a friend with one, you're supposed you don't work for him, you work for God. Amen. Amen. And when you operate like that, he'll just move that cruel man out of the way. Yes, he will, Pastor. Whoever it is. Yes, he will. See, Psalm 37 is still in so God's Bible. <laughs> Lord, him a, he'll look for his place and it won't be there no more. It doesn't matter what year it is and, unless it, until you get this fifth verse in your heart. I say get this, this fifth verse in your heart because it doesn't matter what's going on. Jesus.